frames and adjusting and transforming. Now, if we go to Windows, Workspace, make sure we're on Essentials, then Reset Essentials. Close any palettes that bounce out, and then we go to File, Open, and if you can open your Brexit in Design File. Now, what we're going to look at is transforming frames and how you can scale them and change them. For example, we're going to select the European one with David Cameron. And if you look up the top, we have got a various number of tools. Oh, hey, here are the size settings basically with height, location, X and Y. If you hover your mouse over, it will actually tell you what each is. So we could actually type in a value here, for example, to change the width. So if I change it to 100, which turn, it will change the width of the frame. Notice it did not change the content size, just the frame. So if I change the height to 66, for example, press enter. So the frame has changed size, not the content. I'm going to undo that, Control Z twice. This time I'm going to look at the X and the Y percentage. So what happens if we change these? This is to do with scaling. So if we change it to 50%, it drops the size of the frame by 50% and also the content. So notice this one does the content. As it's linked or it's constrained, both will change at the same time. Control Z to undo. Next up, we have got rotation and also shear. Let's do a shear first. So if we do a 20 degree shear, you can see it sort of starts to move towards a diamond sort of shape, etc. So shear also does the content and the frame at the same time. Control Z twice to get back. Rotation, I'm going to do 60 degrees, rotates the frame and the content at the same time. Now, notice this next section here, we got rotate, and we've also got flips. And this little handy icon here, so if I rotate, so let's do a flip horizontal first. So we flip David from this side to that side. Notice this icon's changed and it's telling us it's been flipped. So it's telling us the original placed graphic has changed, altered. So we know there's something wrong with that if someone complains the image is not quite correct. And the same with flip vertical. Again, this indication lets us know. So control Z, control Z to get back to normal. The P should be the same and it should say not flipped. Now this is where things are a bit strange. When we do a rotation, P rotates but it says not flipped. So the graphic will indicate it's changed but the pop-up will say no change. So be aware, correlation is a bit strange on that one. So change it back. Now there's also the transform tools down here on your toolbar. Hold your mouse button down, we've got free transform, rotate, scale tool, and shear tool. Basically, all these tools are the same as this lot up here. Virtually the same, but these are free formed. So, free transform will allow us to transform any shape or size we so wish. So, control Z, Z, Z to undo. Remember, if you want to keep it in proportion when you transform, hold the shift key down while you do it, and it keeps it in proportion. Rotate tool, does as it says on the tin, it will rotate. Now notice where it's rotating from, it's from this center point here. You can see that little guideline coming up. So I'll go and do that until we get it back to normal. Tool, sorry, scale tool. Now notice how this works. This works from scaling, but it does it again on the center point or its anchor point. 
So I'm going to undo that. And finally, we have the shear tool. Which allows us, when we do it freeform, to do very funky stuff. Now we were talking about the anchor point, or the reference point, sorry. Now we can change the reference point, i.e. where it would rotate from, for example. So I'm going to change it to this bottom left, so you can see it's moved down here. So if I use the rotate tool now, this works with all the uh, transform tools, by the way. So I'm going to change the rotate tool, I'll do my rotation. It's rotating on, on that corner point. You can see what I mean. So, for example, if I change to the uh, scale tool, scale it down, it scales down onto that point, the reference point. So, transforming can be done with a variety of transform tools, but it can also be done with the direct selection tool. We already know if we change or drag the direct selection tool, it does a crop. It changes the size of the frame, but not the content. Remember, if we do it with a selection tool, direct selection tool, you'll find that's the actual size of the image. Selection tool. All right. That's the actual size of the frame. So it's acting like an aperture, a cropping. But you can get it, force it to act as a scale tool. If you hold down the Alt key while scaling or dragging, it will act as a scale tool. Or it should act as a scale tool. <laughs> sorry, let me just do that again. The control key, sorry. And it will act as a scale tool. If you have done a shift key and control at the same time, it will scale in proportion at the same time. So keyboard shortcuts aren't used generally in the exam, so that's why I'm not covering them too much. But you will find a lot of people who use this program will not bother with the scale tool and the shortcuts up here, or rather the long cuts, I'd call them. They would just use shift and control when scaling to scale both the frame and the content at the same time. It's a lot quicker.